Hi, my name is Mayhem Star, and welcome back to Selene Apoptosis, part 4, and welcome back to Wife Beater Simulator. I mean, come on, Wiz, you're supposed to be sensible, I've asked you to behave sensibly. Just because she jump scared you with a horrible little face or whatever it is does not give you the right to go and punch him, you know? However, if any sign could light up at the moment, it would say something like, You're scum, Ethan. No. What? He kept repeating that even after Hope stormed out of the door in tears. No way. He actually did. I thought it was in his head or something, but he actually... He actually did it. You absolute piece of shit. Ethan barely remembered the following few days. Something seemed to be happening. Something is always happening with you. Some people called him. He himself called a lot. He called Hope. <laughs> that was a weird sentence. Hope wasn't answering the phone. He knew this would happen. Every time he dialed her number, he knew he'll end up listening to the voicemail signal. It became something of a ritual. He would wake up. Sometimes it was light outside, sometimes dark, but more often it was something grey. He neither could nor would want to identify because of the dawn curtains. Drawn curtains, sorry. Grey outside. Raining? Clouds? He'd call Hope. Hope wouldn't answer the phone. He would go to the kitchen and turn the water on. He'd watch the silvery, twisted stream break against the sink for a while. Eventually, he put a cup under the stream, fill it to the brim drink. Go to the bathroom. Back to the couch. It was too bad to be true. All of this can't be real. Life can't crumble into pieces in an instant. Just collapse inwards like a wooden block tower. Ethan couldn't remember the name of that game. Jenga, but it's copyright. Once he and Hope went to sea, he did I have a stroke? <laughs> Did I have a stroke? Hold on, let me read that again. Once he and Hope went to see... He and Hope... It's too bad, okay. All of this can't be real. He didn't do anything. Could it be that he didn't do anything? No. He hit Hope. There's a pathetic punch if I remember it, but still a punch nonetheless. He hit her and a red blot spread across her cheek. Oof. Wait. What? How hard did you hit her for her to actually spill blood? Or worse, did you spill blood? Like maybe you like broke your knuckle or something on her. Like split skin on your knuckle on your teeth or something. But you said it was a pathetic punch, so I didn't think you would actually draw blood. It was through Dr. C, but Ethan knew how it goes. How could you do that? You go into jail, buddy. What happens now? What can happen now? These thoughts were like a bunch of needles he tried to swallow over and over. Sometimes he managed to briefly forget about them. It would only happen when he woke. When he woke up in the grey timelessness, looked at the dirty white ceiling and didn't remember who that Ethan Harrison was. But the pain would always come back. He had a bunch of needles in his throat and no matter how much water he drank he couldn't get rid of it. They love their needle uh, metaphors, don't they, and synonyms. Needles in throats, needles here, needles there. Anyway. Hope's father shook him up a bit. Ooh, no. Not in a sense he could have done it, grabbing hold of him, lifting off the ground. Hope's father was a tough man, and despite his age, he could have hit Ethan hard. Ethan was afraid of it, but at the same time, he wanted it to happen. That would have made everything easier. Maybe even fixed it all. That's not going to fix shit, by the way. Ethan was going over, uh, was going over in his head as he stared at the phone screen displaying a familiar number. It was awfully scared. He was awfully scared. Yet he answered. It turned out Hope had asked her father to pack up for her. Mister. Ooh, Mr. Merle's, Merle's voice was flat, maybe even a bit uncertain, and worst of all, he wasn't angry. This plunged Ethan into despair. 
He couldn't get his redemption like this. However, the upcoming visit forced Ethan to gain his senses. It shoved him back into reality, like a stream of people pushing one into a crowded, busy, into a crowded subway train. He tidied up the place a bit. He shaved. He figured out what to say. Several times he rehearsed his speech in front of the mirror. And just before Mr. Mir Mir Lee's arrived, I'll get that right eventually. Ethan left the keys with the neighbors. Simply put, he fled. Of course he, won he warned Mr. Mir Lee's beforehand with the message because he didn't have the heart to call. Ethan wanted Mr. Mir Lee's to pick up what he had, what he had to and get out as soon as possible. Mr. Mir Lee's wasn't going to help. That's for sure. He wasn't going to help, which meant he simply got between Ethan and his wife. Ethan was angry with Mr. Mir Lee's. Like he was the source of all the trouble. What? Excuse me? Anger was boiling up inside him, mixing with cheap coffee and turning into caustic acid. There was nothing rational about this feeling. Ethan had plenty of time to think about it, to weigh it, to examine it under a magnifying glass. He was sitting in a small cafe on the corner of the street until the streets got dark. He would have stayed there even longer if a waiter hadn't come to his table to tell the place was closing. Ethan nodded absently and waited for a moment to use the bathroom. Again, there was nothing rational, rational about being angry with Mr. Merlees. That's correct. And to be honest, it was pathetic. That's correct. Just like hitting your wife and then running away not to face her father. That's also correct. You're scum, Ethan. Worthless scum. Ethan turned off the tap and stared at his reflection in a large mirror. A few drops of water trem trembled? trembled on the tip of his nose and chin. Now that was a proper punch. Ooh, he punched a glass and now he's bleeding from his knuckles. Sir, I'm sorry, but we... Uh, uh, sir? Are you okay? We have blood ooze from his split lip. Oh, he... He punched himself. Ethan wiped it off with the back of his hand. Yeah. Yes, I'm fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to keep you. He smiled. The fresh wound got swollen with blood again. A red blot spread across his face, just as you should. Ethan didn't lie to the waiter. Something changed, and we are going to find out. Hello, hello, TV. The Secrets of Anatomy. So I was just trying to read what the blurry text on the screen said. Hum... I can't read that. Is that a penis? I'm kidding. <laughs> Experiment 1. Experiment 2. Oh, it's tomatoes. Experiment 3. Oh, it might not be experiment, sorry. Ex uh, it's example. My bad. Haven't read a textbook in a while. Uh, example four: a ripe specimen. The screaming man is holding, is hiding here. Ductus, uh, nasocrimalis. That's a tear duct, isn't it? Looks like a tear duct. Might be. Or sinus is one or the other. I'm not too sure. I'm just I'm just throwing guesses out there based on what it means or well, what it's literally telling me. Uh, happy Dreamland. Mary is a lamb. Johnny is a tree. And who's the little liar? Elijah. Well, it's Elijah backwards, but how am I supposed to pronounce Elijah backwards the way it was presented to me? Anyway, moving on. Ethan didn't lie to the waiter, he was really fine. Maybe not in the same sense, same manner as before, but the gears in his head were starting to move again. Uh, whatever you have going on in there, I hope you switch it off. When he got home, Mr. Merrill is... Damn it. Mr. Merlees had already left. Turned out that he didn't even take the keys from the neighbors. At first, Ethan assumed Mr. Merlees would cancel the visit, but as soon as he opened the door, his doubts disappeared. A strong, unfamiliar scent was filling the hallway. Hopefully it's that somebody that we all know. It could be Mr. Merlis, Cologne, or maybe the smell of the apartment itself 
with Hope's presence faded away. Mr. Ruiz must have taken his daughter's keys. Somehow the possibility never crossed Ethan's mind before. He drew the air in through his nostrils and suddenly felt as sharp and clear as in suddenly felt as sharp and clear as in that dream he had days ago. Something was going to happen. Yay! Ethan looked around. The empty dark room stretched, reached for the phone. Was it to perform the ritual? Or was he hoping something would go different this time? I would just call Hope and just repeat over and over and over again until you die. Short beeps. Hiding behind my microphone. Ethan thought it was safe to say something was already happening. He only had to figure out what and where. That's why you don't have weird paintings at home. Something had changed in the picture, and it's not that Hope's favorite blouse is missing from the closet. If you find a difference, you win. Uh, more particularly, what does Blouse's closet have to do with anything? Oh, sorry, the Hope's blouse in the closet have to do with anything. If you find a difference, you'll know where the gears are taking you. Is that for me? Is that for you, Ethan? What's for you? Ha! <laughs> the Halloway. Pot-bellied bowls on the dresser are full of gibberish and dust. Well, there's someone in the mirror. Damn it, I missed it. I, I clicked enter too quickly. The kitchen. There's a shadow. Wow. An uneven row of glasses, glass jars, on a shelf, an empty coffee maker bearing dry. Blackness at the bottom, spoons, forks, and knives, some of them really sharp. The bathroom. A mirror on the wall, and in the reflection, the closed door is open. No, not here. What about... Ethan licked his split lip. Yes, that's it. He has to check his emails now. Ethan was looking carefully. Seemed like a lot of time had passed. His mailbox was full of various emails, but Ethan barely glanced at the names. He was looking for something special, and what was special about, say, letters from the agency that were gradually becoming more and more concerned. At some point concern turned into cold and aggressive. Ethan idly skimmed through the notice of contract termination, not what he was looking for. He started with the oldest emails and scanned the list all the way to the top. Nothing. Maybe he was looking in the wrong place. Maybe there's just nothing to look for. No. Something is happening. Damn right it is. He only has to figure out what and where. Ethan got so close to the accurate answer to those questions that the light of new knowledge could have burned out his eyes. At the top of the list was an untitled letter. Maybe Ethan missed it the first time or maybe it just wasn't there before. The sender was the same writer Ethan had volunteered to help, completely free of charge. Ethan's lungs turned into a deflated pool ball. He clicked on the name of the letter without a name. Of course the letter actually had a name. Male clients carefully added. Male clients carefully add untitled to the empty line just in case you're losing it when you type your email because something got out of that door. Because something got out of that open door in the bathroom mirror. I'm hiding. No, okay. The poor guy begged Ethan to come. The male said he couldn't sleep. He was scared, exhausted, and didn't know who else to ask. Something will get him very soon if he doesn't figure out anything. If he won't figure and if he won't figure anything out, okay. He didn't know if it was related to the work he was doing. He didn't know how to drive away what had settled in his house. He only knew that something enormously hungry was looking at him from the darkness, hiding. You know what I mean, right? Oh, is this your email? Yeah, I know what you mean. Ethan knew. By the time he finished reading the letter, Ethan already knew what he should do: hide. Huh? Since when was there a call? Well, we have to answer the call, right? We've been waiting to answer a call. Oh wait, who's calling? I don't get it. Oh, it's not a phone. There's someone climbing out of the bathroom mirror. Is that what is this? I think what I would do... What would I do? Fight it head on? Or just let it get me? Answer the call. The acquaintance didn't know if it had all had any relation to the work he was doing. 
But what about Ethan's work? Could his research shed light on what lay dormant in the dark and awaken it? Was it Ethan's avid curiosity or the question that teased its appetite? Which one was cursed, the chicken or the egg? Ethan was angry, angry as hell. He wanted to end it, all of it, once and for all. He wanted to face his fear, even if the fear was no longer his own. Even if it was crawling through the wires and climbing communication towers to breathe out, uh, breathe out his noxious spores into the air. Is it really doing that, or is that imagination? Hiding? A very long pause. Oh, it's an eye. Still hiding. Nope, okay. Ethan was angry, but also terrified. What he wanted to think was a delusion took root and grew stronger as he tried to deceive himself. Should have, should, should have gone seen the shrink, you know? It was it, it was as incorporeal as the email in his mailbox, yet at the same time as real. Ethan wanted to face the fear so that it would take a shape and a name, a box in which that fear could fit. Maybe then he could have dealt with it. That's why when Ethan got behind the wheel of his old sedan, Sudan, Sudan, he wasn't doing it for the writer who was tormented by shadows, he was doing it for himself. Well, he better do something good. So far, everything he's done has been absolutely terrible in response to the horrors. In the email, the acquaintance described in detail how to find his house and how to get inside. Too much detail, as if he'd already resigned to his fate. Something would get him very soon and he won't figure anything out. This is just a notice, Mr. Harrison, a notice of life termination. This happens when you look into the abyss for too long. What abyss? But looking isn't enough, is it? We have to touch it. You shine a flashlight into it, throw stones and whistle frantically, like a vandal who managed to get into an abandoned house. Hiding. Nope, okay. You're excited and terrified, and then only terror remains as you realize the door has slammed shut behind you, and the handle won't budge. Hiding. This thought made Ethan speed up, and he crashed his car. And then, just as abruptly, to hit the brakes, hiding. The wheels let out a short hysterical shriek, hiding. The car, swer the car swerved and stopped on the side of the road. The blood was pounding in his ears. Ethan's breath came in short gasps, his eyes searching bl blindly in the dark. After calming down a little, Ethan pretended. Who was he trying to fool? The night road was slippery. Was empty, sorry. He was examining his navigator, but there was but one thought he had in his head. What is he doing? What the hell was he doing? Seems like he asked it out loud. There was no one to answer. It's not too late to turn back. Turn the car around, go back to the city, to the apartment, lie down on the sofa, sleep, sleep, sleep until the morning comes. In the morning, he will call Hope again, and the thought was cut short, because something really awesome turned up. Actually, it didn't lead anywhere from the very beginning. It did end, I'm hiding. The truth was, he had no place or reason to go back. He wanted to go back to the past, and that task was beyond him or his old Toyota. I find it interesting how they use the word Toyota, but not the word Django. I don't know. In the present, he had something left, but the granite grey road ahead and the decision to go. If he hurried, he might still be able to help. 2v1. That'll work, right? The car slowly took off. The rest of the way, and there wasn't much left. Ethan was thinking about his acquaintance. Or were they friends? through circumstance. Probably. You don't have you don't take acquaintances for a journey to the bottom of the abyss, do you? Ethan was thinking about his friend, how long he'd been awake in particular. It had been, Ethan glanced at his phone in the open glove box, quite a long time. A month or so, judging by the emails. How long can a person stay awake? The question followed his car silently. Ethan drove into the suburbs and turned the car around on Deputy Road. The 25 mile per hour speed limit road sign at the bend of the road seemed as white as an old bone. He 
Ethan turned down Sa Sic Sycamore Street? The lawn in front of House 8 was overgrown with tall grass, so tall as if it hasn't been touched for. How long can the person stay awake? Ethan thought it was probably the rainy weather. He didn't remember much of the past week, but he was pretty sure about the rain. Even now, the ground was still damp and springy underfoot. Yes, it must be the rain. Humidity makes grass grow faster. When he got out of the car, a shadow detached from the trees near the house. Ethan stiffened, then eased a moment later. The figure quickly walked away along the narrow concrete path. Just a passerby, Ethan watched him go. The concrete beneath his boots gave way to gravel. Ethan walked past the sprawling hemlock covered with rosettes of small white flowers. The bush reached up to mid-thigh, all the windows were dim, no lights anywhere. The house stood a little way off, dark, quiet, and still as the night itself. Almost like the house was slumbering along with its host. For a moment Ethan felt stupid and was about to turn back to the car, but he stayed after all. He was invited. No. Not that, he was called for help. Maybe he and his friend got a little too stressed and that's all. Induced delusional disorder in all its glory. Maybe Ethan was desperate to be needed, so he jumped at the chance to be someone's saviour. Perhaps his unfortunate friend had already fallen asleep and disturbing him was a bad decision overall. Well, Ethan was fine with that. He just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Ethan firmly knocked on the door. No one answered. Neither the first time nor the third. No lights came on in any of the rooms and there was no sound behind the door. One of the windows on the second floor was open. Hey, we left that window open. Huh. It wasn't for the cat to get in, but for us to get in. Ethan moved away from the porch and tried to take a better look. No movement. The house was asleep, and its sleep resembled torpor. Ethan himself came to think he might be dreaming, but if two people share the same dream, is it any different from reality? Slowly, as if it had really been a dream, Ethan went to the flower tub the letter had mentioned and took the spare key from its hiding place. Just as slowly he returned to the door. The key rattled three times in the lock and the door drifted inwards into the darkness. At the top of the stairs leading to the second floor, there sat a cat. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? It's our cat friend. Ethan tried to call out to it, but the cat didn't move, still watching him with his bright round eyes. Ethan plunged into the darkness of the house. The darkness and the stench, which were almost one and the same here. That's the thing with animals, right? And cats and dogs. They just stink, especially cats. They stink so bad. Hiding. Don't you dare jump scare me. The smell unbearably thick and dense wrapped the house in a suffocating shroud. Ugh, gross. It's definitely the smell of a cat. Fun fact, uh, one of my friends has roommates that he's not too happy with, and they have a cat which lives in their one room. And they, the roommates went on a holiday, and so to get revenge, he left the cat inside that room and kept all the windows shut. Of course, the cat was well looked after, but the smell emanating from that room was enough to kill a man. So, this could be the same problem, I guess. Ethan tried not to think about where it's coming from. Instead, he thought of Celine, or rather her dark counterpart, Hikate. Really? Well, I don't know. I don't know anything about mythology. I just saw Hikate and thought, that's a French sniper rifle. The ancient Greeks believed that she appears in the form of a dog, but dogs were sacrificed to her, weren't they? Better turn the light on. Oh, you turn it on. I'm going to hide behind my microphone. Hello. Okay, I'm peeking out from under my, my microphone, just to the side. It was really better to, but Ethan couldn't gather enough courage to do it. Dogs, uh, sorry, dogs are the natural enemy of cats. So goes the fiction. Light is the natural enemy of darkness, so turn on the light. Life is the natural enemy of death. And what wish could be more natural than a wish to destroy your natural enemy, so turn on the light. 
Ethan stumbled over something. It's the bottle of milk. He looked down. No. Do I have to censor you? Oh, I guess not. I'm fine. A hand was peeking out from behind the kitchen counter, blackened and swollen. Of course, Ethan would have seen more if he had a flashlight. Did the guy just, like, when he fell over, right, and he dropped the milk, did he die at that point in time? Somehow, Ethan wasn't surprised. As if it's him, not his friend, who had long ago resigned to his fate. You have received a notice of life termination. It suddenly dawned on him. But the question, is it there? Yeah, it's there. Okay, it's in the text. It suddenly dawned on him. Madness, curse, and death are contagious. And this is not a dark age superstition, but an actual law of reality. Selene, Hecate, Artemis. Madness, curse, and death. Here lies the accurate answer, as accurate as it gets. The answer has three faces, and he himself wished to look into each of them. Ding. A sound of glass breaking in the hall. But it wasn't a window collapsing. The light bulbs. Someone was smashing the light bulbs with a bat. Specifically? One by one. The sound was getting closer. Ethan closed his eyes. Good night. Ending 6 of 6. Is that it? Something changed. Happy Dreamland. I will give you the keys of the kingdom to heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed will be lost in heaven. The Hans and Sam show. What do you do when you feel lonely? I don't feel lonely. What do you do when you feel lonely? I don't feel lonely. What do you do when you feel lonely? Something bad happens if you ask me again. What do you do and I'm gonna hide? Told you. Oh, he died. The Hans and Sam show. Hans and Sam? Hans and Sam. Blue Lights Hotel. We welcome your stay. Sorry, we welcome your stay for a moderate price. Is that it? Is that really it? A gift well earned. What now? What's the last choice? Don't interfere. Sweat broke out on his upper lip. Ethan closed his eyes. No. Ethan said it with firm clarity. All the following words that came out of his mouth were more and more quiet till his lips moved silently. No, I'm sorry. I can't help. I'm so sorry. He really was sorry. Sorry about his former life. Sorry for himself desperately, the point his stomach clenched with a painful spasm. Sorry for hope. Sorry for the poor writer who was being dragged deep into a cold vortex of darkness. But what could he, Ethan, do against that darkness? He failed. Maybe he had the skill to get the answers required, but they were buried too deep. At that depth, the water turned pitch black and there were things in that blackness Ethan didn't know the names of, didn't want to know. He took a deep breath as if he actually wanted as if he actually was about to dive. Then he deleted the email. I'm hiding now. The letter with the title, Untitled, disappeared into the dark vortex. The frantic, terrified pleas for help were erased, leaving no trace as if they had never existed. No, it's not like that. Hope once told him. It was a bad time for Ethan to recall this. The information on the internet doesn't really disappear after you click delete. Someone downloads it, that's why you never, ever, ever do something stupid on the internet, like particularly stupid. More often it remains somewhere on the servers and you just lose access to it. 
You turn the mirror to the wall and pretend like it's your fancy. There was nothing wrong with the reflection. In that case, the silent scream didn't vanish. It was now trapped. Trapped where no one could hear it. I'm so sorry. Ethan covered his face with his hands. The mirror on the wall of Ethan's dark bathroom was reflecting a closed door. Ethan and Hope got an official divorce three months later. They never talked about everything that happened. But what did actually happen? Over time, the horrors you experienced got erased from memory, fade, weaken. Such are the defense mechanisms of the human psyche. Psyche, sorry. So what did happen? Dad loves you and never stood silently at the head of your bed, clutching a pillow in your hands, in his hands for some reason. When you were eight, Uncle Jeremy didn't take you behind the barn, didn't show you anything, or make you show anything. What? The grandmother's old wig does not and never had any long spider legs. Ethan's psyche was notably suffered, but it has but it was playing by the rules still. He wanted simple, coherent explanations, and he knew where to get them. Dr. Laura Steen of an island of clarity and sanity in the horrors, as Ethan has discovered, fade from memory much better if you break them down into phallic symbols. What? Ethan wished he'd stayed, started therapy sooner. Who knows, maybe most of that nightmare could have been avoided. The police never figured out what happened, but even the clumsy versions suited Ethan much better than what he remembered. What he allegedly remembered. So what did happen? Week after week, Ethan felt like he was gradually recovering. Of course, he had to give up his career as an independent consultant in favor of a more pr predictable office job, but at least he had the money for proper therapy. And at some point, a small incident happened. Dr. Stein introduced an electronic registration system. As it goes with electronic registration systems, something went wrong on the second or third week, and it turned out that three people had an appointment in the same time slot. Mr. Quinns, Mr. Harrison, and Miss Merlees. The meeting felt awkward at first, but the tension faded surprisingly quickly. By mutual agreement, Mr. Quinns was the first to see, was the first to go to Dr. Stein's office. Ethan and Hope were left alone on the couch. They were both smiling, a little tense, but overall happy. Since they met like that, they decided to go out for coffee and talk about various things because they hadn't spoken in a long time. Then at some point, they decided to hold hands. The next day, they were hardly keeping their eyes open because they only managed to sleep for a total of three hours. That was the inevitable, as in a relationship you always have to sacrifice something. What? What? What did I just read? Is... <laughs> whatever. Who was that? Hope leaned over the arm of the sofa and looked at Ethan curiously. He shrugged. A literary agency, one of the few I haven't disgraced myself in front of yet. They're looking for enough of a boring guy to be their historical consultant. The working schedule is something about a whole day and most of the might and most of the blah, 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 blah. The working schedule is something about a whole day and most of the night, seven days a week. So what do you say? That I am a happily employed office worker and I heartily enjoy cooler water. Are you serious? Ethan, don't be silly. We both know this is your true calling. I understand this kind of work takes a lot of time, but you could quit the office job and... I could, but I don't want to. And relive those nightmares? Hell no. It's my turn to bring the mammoth to the cave. What about your calling? I know well enough how hard you work to make this startup of yours survive. Who will make a homeless cat tinder if not you? Well, actually, there is quite a variety of animals in our database. You'd be surprised. Recently, someone booked a mini pig. A mini pig? Like an actual pig, but portable? Yeah. What? Well, kind of. 
The mini part stands for just a hundred pounds instead of a good old six hundred. People get crazy over cute piglet photos. Sorry. People get crazy over cute piglet photos and think this is it, but in reality. Wait a minute. Don't try to change the subject. I didn't even think about it. Hope sighed, frowning. I don't want to give I don't want you to give up on your dream. I'm not giving up on anything. And anyway, I do understand that Miss Merlees won't marry an ordinary office clerk. But I have a plan. Oh come on. A sofa cushion slapped against Ethan's streak. Hope tried her best to look serious, but she was too pleased to pull it off. Besides, she was burning with curiosity. What's the plan? I'm writing a book on mythology. Wow. So now you are not only a popular history consultant, but also a talented writer. Guess I'll start getting used to this thought. Ethan grinned. Something of that sort, yes. Is this a happy ending? This had better be a happy ending. And what's your future bestseller about? What? Ugh, why now? Okay, it seemed to hope, just for a brief moment, that Ethan's eyes became round and shiny pools of black narc. What? The Chthonic Gods of Ancient Greece. Is it to do with Cthulhu? I don't know. Oh, phenomenal. Isn't that great? Ending 4 out of 6. Really? Blue Lights Hotel. Hey, hey, hey. Do you want to go back? Where? Something changed. Let's have a look. The light from a single source is split with a half-silvered mirror. The resulting beams each reflected by a series of mirrors. We expect them to combine at some point. I'm not saying it's safe, all I'm saying is... Dots. Dots all over the place. Sorry. All I'm saying is we are observing the experiment. I might need a wiki for this one. Happy dreamland! Fear not the devil but the god, for he walks among us and his eyes are hungry. There are mirrors behind mirrors and doors behind doors, some of them not like the other. Okay. Something did indeed change. February 13th. An awful day I was. Crazy scared for mom. She says she'll have some day off and we'll be watching movies and eating waffles. I love that, but she looks very sad. I don't know what to do. TV program is there. We can't go back any further, so what I'm gonna do... I'm gonna save here. And what we'll do... Is we'll go all the way back to here. Oh, not save, sorry, load, return. No, I don't want to overlight my save. Load. Let's load the part where we're here, right? And last time I clicked drag her away from the window. Let's click don't come any closer. Ethan couldn't see, but he knew. He felt that Hope was really standing down there. And she was looking at the window, of course. Although she couldn't see much anymore as the blurry veil covered her eyes. The girl slowly turned around and stared at him, with her, wise, with her eyes wide open without blinking. Her shoulders shook as if she was going to cry, but she was laughing. 
At first, there was a couple of stifled laughs. Then it became a laughter of someone who just heard a great joke, and gradually turned into wild barking screams. He has to stop it. Right now. Ethan wanted to rush to the window, but took one step and froze in place. The girl must be out of her mind. She's stoned, or worse. She might have a syringe, and he doesn't want any more problems. That's the most sensible thing he said. Now get the gun. He only wants this thing removed from his windowsill. Welded in a steel box and dumped somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic. I love that. That's phenomenal. He still had his phone in his hand. Yes. 911, what's the address of your emergency? The bitch shrank, hunched, but kept cackling like a pack of coyotes, yelping on a moonlit night. She was writhing with laughter, and the pale rags of dry, flabby skin were shaking in the rhythm of her movements. Her dress looking like a death shroud. He suddenly thought she was much older than he thought at first. What's going on? Ethan looked at her for the last time, a mixture of hate and disgust in his eyes, and turned away, running his fingers through his hair. There's a stranger in my apartment, a woman, most likely on drugs or just insane. Can you see her right now? Ethan could only see the wall in front of him, but he heard a deafening howl. It was echoing through his skull beating into his temporal bones, just like a desperate bird. Ethan clenched his teeth. Yes. Does she have a weapon? Maybe. She threatened me. Can you leave the apartment? No. This scum can escape, and I don't want her to get- Ethan hesitated. I can't hear you, sir. What is happening? Speak up. I can't hear you. What is happening? The terrifying laughter kept echoing in Ethan's ears. There was no one behind him. That was a good sequence. That was a really decent sequence. I like that pretty much. That's probably the best sequence of this entire game. It's thus far from what I've played. He approached the window softly as if, as if it was happening in a dream. The shards of Hope's cup crunched under his feet, just like before the window was closed. Ethan opened it and carefully looked down. He did not see the body, too good to be true, but he had to check. Only the grey pavement, which gradually turned black as it actually started raining. Ethan looked across the street just in time to notice the familiar cream-colored coat disappearing behind the corner of a nearby house. Hope. Hope. I'm not screaming that last one, sorry, I don't, don't have the energy. Or the ability to do that or I'm going to wake up some neighbors. He screamed so loud that something snapped in his throat, but she didn't hear him. Or maybe she didn't want to hear. Baby, come back. You can blame it all on me. Ethan called her at least a hundred times. Hope didn't answer. Ethan thought he could come to her office, but eventually decided it would only make things worse. The police were in his apartment 23 minutes, 40 seconds later. They didn't find any signs of forced entry, and the call recorded, as Ethan found out later, had nothing that resembled laughter or howling. No extraneous sounds, as the officer said. Hope returned sometime between late at night and early in the morning. The skin in her cheekbones was taut and almost transparent, and there were deep shadows under her eyes as if she hadn't slept in a long time. And the strong smell of alcohol. We've been here. So if I think we've read something before, I'm just gonna skip by it. So, so far, this nothing is changing. I think it changes again at the final choice that we make, which is at the very, very end. Yeah, not here yet. Yeah. Okay, so now we're at the choice again. So choosing to get closer or to get away does not make a difference. Based on what I've got back here, I think it's better if we restart again and then see if there are other endings. But I think I might end that video there for today. Endings 4 and 6 were discovered. So, that was Celine, Apoptosis. 
we may decide to, or I may decide to revisit this game depending on whether or not I feel like trying to get the other endings. But so far, we have ending 4 and 6, and some of these choices don't really matter to the story, technically speaking. So I guess that's about it. Uh, I'll give my quick two cents about how I feel about the game now, just as a epilogue. I really, I enjoy the game for the most part. The story is here, there, and everywhere, but what it gets right, it seriously gets right. Like horror related, the atmosphere, the music, the sound, all of that is absolutely great. Where it falls short, I think, is in the, um, the translation, because uh, I don't think the author's first language is English, could be some other language. And I think for a game like this, you need to be, I guess, careful enough with the way that you structure certain sentences and you structure your, all your sentences, really, so that you don't pull the player away from the experience. Because I found myself just wondering, what exactly am I reading? So it kind of breaks my flow. But there were some sequences, sequences in there that I really, really liked, uh, that flowed really well. But yeah, overall, good game. It definitely deserves its praise. But for what it is, I can't complain, right? And I'm sure that the vast majority of people who play this game aren't here for the story, per se. I'm sure they're here for other things. One of the reasons why I can't really link this Steam page, because there's a lot of you-know-what, so... Thank you for your understanding. And yeah, the reason why I played this game was simply because I saw it on the Steam. This looks pretty cool. There seems to be a little bit of hype around it. I'm gonna go check it out. No harm. And what we got from it was really solid. Solid in general execution. Uh, story was weak. Wasn't too sure where they wanted to go with the whole concept. Everything else they got pretty much correct. My name is Mayhem Star, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.